Hello and welcome to Basement Fodder, the only show you're currently listening to. I'm Todd. I'm Dave. And we are live, as always, from the Nook of Doom. The Nook. Nestled in between the box, the cat shit. In. <laughs> oh, but now we have a new one. <laughs> <laughs> now the magic electric box, the cat shit's in. The it cat does not the, like the, the shit the, in. It torments the cat. <laughs> like, just the fucking... This cat is, like, in extreme <laughs> agony. Like, I have never seen this cat, like, so fucking, like, what have you done to my world? <laughs> you learned new shit about cats. Like, I've never had pets before. And I, what I did not realize is, like, how apparently, like, it, like cat burying its poop is some sort of weird dominance thing. So, like, like if you to take other it away, cats? Yeah. yeah. And so, like, the uh, for Christmas, we got from um, Ariel's mom uh this automatic litter box yeah which she's been wanting forever yeah like so big awesome thing and like nobody wants to clean the fucking litter box it's <laughs> yeah. like the the shit job that you have to like beg and control motherfuckers to do like even uh you know my kid is like eh, it's not <laughs> worth the allowance like <laughs> yeah, it's kind of one of those yeah like, uh, <laughs> do it if you force yeah, me yeah, like who's the owner okay yeah uh, you know. <laughs> but fucking so we get the electric cat box and they hook this thing up or whatever and it has crystals in it instead of like traditional litter but basically what happens is cat gets in there pisses her shits and then this like combing device comes down and it combs the poo or pee into like a collection bucket and yeah. then everything's clean again. Yeah. So we put it down there and uh, the cat immediately gets in it and takes a shit. Mm-hmm. And like he does his normal like I'm going to cover it up with the, you know stuff. And so the turd is like sitting there covered in crystal. It looks like something from the fucking Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. <laughs> the Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. And fucking my man took a shit in the corner. <laughs> so he t- <laughs> turned on the cat box and the cat immediately is like, "Uh," and jumps the fuck out of it into the other litter box and it's like mm, mm, and it like combs the poop into the poop receptacle and then the poop is gone and the cat is furious yeah like it's just been dominated by a machine yeah it like starts crying and like furiously just digging clawing at the through machine through the fucking I'll crystals hear, to try to find its poop yeah I'll hear this thing <laughs> like clawing and batting at the freaking electrical mm-hmm. thing like it'll, it still will use it it hates I mean, it yeah still, it'll shit in there yeah. but it's furious about it yeah like, like <laughs> how dare you neither one of them like it like it's weird it's like sitting in a toilet that you don't doesn't know at first has a bidet and then you didn't really ask oh, the auto flushing yeah, ones yeah, that scare the crap out of you yeah, like, it's, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it wait till it's almost out not when you're done it's like eh, and then it just sucks the rest of your shit out and you're like what the fuck is this man <laughs> like, oh, I like this but yeah dude uh, he will literally come like look at me like ah, where's my poo <laughs> what have you done to my poo and I'm god like, damn poop in it there's uh, nothing I can be doing about it machine vacuum ate my poo and I'm like I don't know what you're talking about uh, I'll go away, cat. <laughs> Get the <laughs> hell out of here. Yeah. We, uh, our friend Jerrica came over the other night, and she's got this little uh, tiny gay dog. And uh, <laughs> it's a little, like, purebred chihuahua, and it weighs literally two pounds, and it had a sweater on. I mean, a fucking sweater with, like, a hood. Like, a Christmas sweater. Yeah. Because uh, I guess because they're ostensibly because they're cold, or if you have a tiny gay dog, you're gonna get a tiny gay sweater. But like, <laughs> I'm going with both call A and call B. So like the cats, I think um, at least one of them has been around a dog before. Yeah. But like, they did not know. I don't think they could quite quantify that this was a dog. They're like, is it a rat? Because Dude, the way they looked at it was the way that they look at when like my kid brings out her fucking like little mechanical pig that like oinks and walks around. It was the same kind of like, what is this fucking thing and why is it walking around in my area? It's like, should I attack it? Should I not attack it? Like, what's going to happen it's if like, I attack it? It's like prancing around in its little sweater and it gets up in my lap and I'm looking at like Gigi and Gigi's like, the fuck is that thing doing? Yeah. That's not where it goes. Yeah. And Mike's like, what? Why are you petting that weird thing? I'm like, what is that thing? And then it decided it was hungry and it wanted to go eat out of their bowl. This was not a thing that was okay. <laughs> They both are just, like, fucking intently death-staring at this thing while it's eating this food, like, you motherfucker, you come in my house. Were they up on the, were they up on the cat tree? Yeah. Or were they on the, uh... Like, rarely do you see them on the same side. Yeah. Because they literally have the world's longest continuous hardcore match at all times. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I've never seen them gang up before, but, like, they're both, like, death-staring this fucking half of a tiny fart of a dog. 
Like, I will eat you. <laughs> it reminds me of that time, what was it? It was like The Rock and uh, with the other wrestler, and then Kurt Angle was in there trying to get all yeah. the lab, <laughs> just turned and whooped the shit out of Kurt Angle. Yeah, I feel like it was like, there was about to be like a tiny dog beat down. Yeah, like, uh-oh. <laughs> but thankfully, we escaped beat down free. Yeah. But it was an interesting reaction to mm-hmm. see them around this tiny, tiny, tiny thing of yeah. a dog. And I'm like, I wish you. I bet you wish you were a real dog. Like it was cute, <laughs> but they're so shaky and weird. Like I, I can't get into Chihuahuas. I really can't. Like if a little dog, like they're angry. There's a yeah. They're fucking like this viciously. one was really sweet, but yeah, like but they're viciously angry. Like our, our our buddies at work, um, Sean and Jeffrey. They're a couple. They're lovely, uh, lovely guys. They just got dogs. Two little dogs. <laughs> dogs they're, or rats? Yeah, they're, they're Jack Russell uh, okay. Chihuahua uh, mm. mix. Okay. So, so it's half a dog. One of them is cute. The other one is bug-eyed and weird looking. Yeah. And they named them King Louis and Marie Antoinette. I shit you're not. Uh, <laughs> what a, this is not unexpected. No. They've so, always got to be extra. Yeah. <laughs> that And like, um, they're brother and sister the dogs are brother yeah. and sister so they got like kind of a, a discount for buying both of them yeah because you know not a lot of people want to take two dogs necessarily yeah. Yeah. and they didn't want to separate them because well, I mean, it's better you know, for the dog because there was they, three you know, of them there was yeah. another one but it, it did get taken yeah it's better to, like to do yeah. that you kind of acclimate easier <laughs> the thing about sean is that like, he's very not much like with patience mm-hmm. and so like the dog does not instantly taking to him and this is very, like, frustrating. For I'm like, dude, you, you have to give it time. First of all, it's a puppy. Yeah. Second of all, it doesn't have a lot of human interaction. Because yeah. it's from, like, it's not from a pound, but it's from one of those adoption places. Okay. Like, that's not a pound, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the ones that, like, you know, uh, adopt out puppies and shit. Okay. And he just, like, <laughs> expects it to like, instantly bond with no. him. I'm like, that, that's not how dogs that's work, first of all. And I worse. told you... I fucking told you that chihuahuas are vicious little bastards. Yeah. Because they are. They are. They're not like a super lovey dog. They're generally they pretty like fucking vicious. Piddle and fucking They're gnaw. like those little dinosaurs like in Jurassic Park that gang up on you and just the, pick oh, you the, clean the, and shit. The second like, one yeah. that ate the little girl. That's, yeah. wah, 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 wah. Yeah. But, like, it's that's so cute. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you ever seen like miniature Dobermans and shit? Like they Big look pins? like Yeah, they look like chihuahuas like they're chihuahua size but they're like little baby Dobermans. I've seen like a gaggle of those bastards take down a Rottweiler. Like they're fucking vicious. Okay, I saw a group of dachshunds <laughs> take down a little girl. <laughs> like, it was my girlfriend's sister at the time. She was deathly afraid of them. I a may pack have, of wiener dogs. I may have known this when I let the door open. <laughs> You bastard. I'm sorry, but if somebody said they had a death fear of dogs, <laughs> I had to. I had to have this proven. Man, of all the dogs to be afraid of, that is not, like, well, they're very slow no, moving. Like, no, they're not. Like, apparently <laughs> she got attacked when she was younger by one, and apparently, no, they are not, I've owned multiple of these. These are not slow moving dogs. These are, like, Really? Fast. They seem like they would be. No. They have tiny little legs and fat belly dragging on the ground. No, like. those are the fat ones. The, <laughs> they're, the normal ones are fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, you learn something new every day. Yeah. So this is the first official show of the new year, uh-huh. 2018, a year that makes me two years away from 40, which is just horrifying beyond all belief. Maybe I'll get lucky and die before then. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how was your new year, sir? It was fun. I went down to Atlanta. To hot Atlanta. <laughs> hot Atlanta. <laughs> cold Atlanta. Cold Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I go down, like, Friday it was warm, and then the rest of the fucking weekend it was, like, in the 30s. Like, when I left, uh, what was it, Tuesday morning, it was 16 degrees in Atlanta. <laughs> like, our, my friend who lives there was like, nobody's going to work today. <laughs> They're all going off. Is it like Ohio yeah, where everybody's yeah, just like, yeah, 16, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no. He said they got hit with snow, uh, like, a week or two ago. They and it cry. shut. They, no, it shut down. Like, Atlanta <laughs> shut down. Because they don't have anything for that. They're not one of those, they get it enough to warrant yeah. owning all that stuff. So they don't. Like, they don't have shit for salt. They probably maybe have one plow truck. It probably belongs to some guy named Billy Bob. <laughs> Who knows? But... I was going to say, though, that reminds me, we went to uh, Florida when I was a kid for Christmas. We went to Orlando to go to Disney for Christmas. 
and it was like 65 degrees and motherfuckers were wearing parkas. Oh, like, no. <laughs> when I was there, dude, I could not stop laughing. My friend Katie was like, what? And I was just like, oh, my. Dude, these people, like, in 40-degree weather, I was walking around in a T-shirt. It was 40. It felt great compared to here. Yeah. These motherfuckers are walking around in fur line fucking like, oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was just laughing hysterically. She's like, they're not used to this. I was like, I, I. You're like, no, no, pussies. <laughs> Why'd you even leave your house then, you fucking sissy? Come on. Like, jeez. Oh, my God. Horror bitches ain't nothing. Oh, I had to go to the mall in the park. Huh? Motherfucker's <laughs> swimming when it's 45 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> like, dude, actually, we were driving around, and I swear to God, I saw a dude in a t shirt, flip flops, and like shorts, and I was like, that guy knows what's up. Like, knows it's, what's only, up. it's only 40 degrees out. <laughs> Shit, like, pussies, come on. No, That's I distinctly crazy. remember we were. I was 16 and we went to fucking Orlando like for a vacation on Christmas, like literally for Christmas. And uh, or my, my dad was absolutely like, we're going to get in the ocean. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, the cat is taking a shit in the electric box right now. I can hear the electric box I know, going. I making the noise. Anyway, yeah. yeah, he was determined to swim in the ocean. Oh, God. Now, <laughs> mind you, it was about 60. In the ocean? No, it was about 60 outside. Yeah. So the ocean is like 40. Yeah. Because it's about 20 degrees cooler. Roughly. Roughly. Depending. On, depending. Yeah. And it had been cold or than that. Yeah. Like, it had been in the 50s. Yeah. So, we go out there, and it's like 60, 65, 68 degrees or something like that. <laughs> Nuts gone. No, and Jeez. like, so we're out there with like, and there's people walking up and down the beach with like, literally winter parkas on. Yeah. Like, and they're looking at us like, what the fuck? Because like, I'm in shorts and no shirt, and so is my dad. And people are just walking by, like, look at them crazy people. Like, yeah. And Jesus. fucking, my mom's like, yeah, I'm not going to get any of that shit. Yeah. <laughs> and so here goes my dad, loping off into the ocean like a fucking walrus, and just psh, all the way up into the waves. And I walked out about till I hit my nuts, <laughs> and then they were gone, <laughs> and I was like, I ain't going any further. I'm done. <laughs> this is as far as we go. Yeah. And he's out there just flipping through the fucking waves and shit, and I'm like, that's okay, because there's a heated pool in the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be in it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's where me and Bob would be swimming. So my mom's sitting, like, in a fucking hoodie <laughs> on a towel on the beach, and some dude walks up, and he's like, uh, do you know those people? And she's like, yeah, that's my, my husband and my son. And she's like, does insanity run in your family? Like, <laughs> 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 that man's crazy. Yeah, I have bad luck with the ocean, though. <laughs> like, I was going to say, yeah, for the fucking, stories you have told me. Well, hell, the other time we were in uh, Myrtle Beach and the fucking beach got closed down because some guy died and they couldn't figure out where his body went. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the person that's no. boogie boarding into a dead body. <laughs> so like, everybody's like, the waves are good and shit and we're all like body surfing around and having fun and shit. And then like from down the beach, you're like, oh, they're not saying why. And like, we're getting out and shit and like fucking shit's brushing against my leg and it's fish obviously you know like oh god <laughs> and, and then we get out and they're like oh yeah some guy died down there surfing and he went down this way we think and we can't figure out where I'm like oh! <laughs> what 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 <laughs> so yeah bad luck with the ocean but no uh, fucking so did you guys do anything for New Year's or you just like hang out and drink or what um well we hung out watched a lot of the bowl games and then um Dave loves college sports. I give a fuck. I, I did. I was enjoying it. Um, got to hang out with Mama Van Kirk. That's what we refer to. Always, always a classic. Oh, dude, she retired now, so it's it's fucking hilarious. Her and all three of the dogs. Oh god. Like, yeah, a boxer, a dogo, and then whatever that one tiny is that's Brutus. But um, um, we end up getting. A hotel room, and we had a bunch of people come out, and we kind of just like all the people that he knew in um, the Atlanta area and stuff, and we kind of just had like a little party. Actually, we were not the crazy ones. There was this up little like crazy little Asian lady, not really like lady, more like a weird tw- teen, twenty year old walking around with a Chucky doll and videotaping her and her friends. Make it some weird YouTube video. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah, it's like <laughs> so we were like, well, obviously we're not going to be the weird ones in the hotel. No. <laughs> we're going to be the sane ones. Um, and then I end up getting a tattoo on uh, New Year's Eve. 
Like yeah, before. it turned out really yeah. right. Like, and healed yeah. very quickly. Yeah, yeah, because the that new thing that the mm-hmm. tattoo artist uh, they had this film, like a medical film, that he put on, and basically for every day that you wore it, it healed it uh, the equivalent of two days. Mm-hmm. So I wore it for four days, and then my, you know, it healed up for like eight days, which. It actually really did. Like, I'm only having minimal amounts of peeling from it. Yeah, that's stuff, great. So, you know, that was really good. Um, did some shopping at the mall uh, with my friend Katie. <laughs> that was a bad influence. Made her buy stuff in Torrid that she shouldn't have bought. She was oh, like, God. She's like, God damn it. And I'm like, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, we went out. Uh, had some expensively okay steak. Um, Did you hear what fifty dollar mediocre steak? Yeah, my fifty dollar <laughs> mediocre steak. Yeah, the total bill for that whole trip visit was like mm, way more than it should have been. <laughs> like, I feel like if I'm paying fifty dollars for a steak, I better be filleted while I'm eating it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it. I mean, it was one of those things. He, you know, my friend said it and stuff like that. Is like the, the, the people down in Atlanta thought it was really good steak mm-hmm. and stuff. He goes, but the problem is, is they're like. It's not like when you're up here, Texas, or places where there are good grass-fed beef. Like, yeah. it's not the same. Atlanta, like, Georgia doesn't get necessarily as good quality. But, I mean, it's still good. And I'm like, well, then somebody needs to tell them he needs to stop charging $50. <laughs> for, like, fuck you, motherfuckers. Like, I should have been like, hey, I'm not from Atlanta. I know how much this steak really should be. And then they'd be like, we need you to leave. <laughs> like, all your steak in this entire building is no more than $20. I swear to God, I could take you to a Lone Star and you'd give me your steak. <laughs> oh. <laughs> fuck you, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> that was good. Uh, it was a fun time. And then the worst part of the trip happens, and that's when I have to, like, I love flying down to Atlanta. I hate flying out of Atlanta because, and even my friend says it there, is like, <clears throat> so the TSA agents that all work there, yeah. either A, must have been like, hmm, what a, I could grow up to be the fry cook at McDonald's, or I could be a TSA agent. So I'm going to obviously go be the TSA agent. And I mean, they're the biggest group of incompetent fucking morons ever um their mach- the the fucking scanning machines were down mm-hmm. when i went there like i of course missed my flight of course this is the second time in a row leaving atlanta <laughs> that i've missed a flight um uh, so i had to get uh put on another plane dude it was stupid ridiculous and they were like i needed to have been there three hours before is what they said yeah i'm like Three hours is what they say for international, and they're like, well, I mean, you know. And I'm like, flying to another state out of Atlanta is not international, goddammit. You might as well be. You might as well be. (laughs) I mean, dude, it was so... And you could just see the level of not give a fuck on all of their faces. Of course. Literally, they're just like, you're fucking freaking out trying to get on a plane and stuff like that. And they're like... Like, I had one lady just walk off and just stand somewhere. (laughs) <laughs> like we can all see her standing there and she's just looking at us standing there <laughs> and then the hate glares start happening and she's just like mm, don't give a fuck still standing there and then eventually she waddles her ass back over and we're, I, I thought the woman in front of me was going to stab her um, but yeah I wonder why people go bat, bat shit on fucking airplanes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah it was just it was bad Like like I said I love going down there it's just flying back is such a fucking hassle. Like, doesn't matter what time of the day you pick, because look, the traffic in Atlanta is fucking horrible. No, I like, can it's imagine. Just shitty, shitty, horrible. So it's basically like you have to plan your flight to be like midday. You got to be there in the morning. Yeah. Like, y- you minimally want to be there four hours before your flight leaves. And I'm like. My flight left at 8 in the morning. You want me to show up at 4 in the fucking morning? Apparently so. Yeah. yeah. It sucks. Uh, our friend down there had got this thing called pre-TSA, like, checked. So, basically, he doesn't even have to wait in any of those lines anymore. He's already been checked. He just shows him the thing. And he just... 
right on through. So it's like, fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Number one, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are you you leaving out on your flight to Chicago? Uh, Well, you know, I got got a nice little thing on that one because it's like, well, you're going to Chicago where right now it's negative six degrees with the the real feel with the wind temperature negative like 16 degrees. (laughs) I was like, at least where I'm going, it's still above the negative temperature. So like... Only barely. Only barely, but still... (laughs) Yeah, you know, so it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was it was nice to get out, get out and do something different. So. Yeah, I had to work. <laughs> yeah, I was say. And I had to work. Uh, the ball dropped on my first break. Yeah, like, well, there you go. Yeah, uh, they they did they they treated us well though. Like um, one of our bosses, like they her uh, her boyfriend is a chef, mm-hmm. so they brought in all these big crock pots full of meat. Like uh, there was pulled pork and. Um, brisket and chicken they were all like for nachos basically like three big crock pots full of meat and like this like homemade nacho cheese and shit that he made it was it was actually literally some of the best nachos i've ever had in my life nachos. and then they had champagne out and shit like champagne. or um, you know american sparkling wine <laughs> yeah as i say champagne. Um, yeah <laughs> shit pan um yeah. And like noisemakers and shit, but it's like, uh, uh, thank you for the effort. I, I'm more excited about the fact that you're paying me time and a half to be here. Like, and I'm, making, I'm gonna go smoke my yeah. cigarette now. Like, <laughs> giving you shit and do some food, yeah. probably. Yeah, oh, and giving me like just epic fucking doom. But I tell you what, they're literally the best pulled pork I've ever had in my life. Like, and you better Both believe in that, and out. You better believe that I gaffled the rest of that shit yeah. in the morning. Like, <laughs> 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 But right. yeah, it was. Eh, it is what it is. Like yeah. New Year's is such a non-holiday to me. Like, it's like it's, unless you're free to get drunk, yeah. there's really no point. I don't really. It's care. pointless. Yeah, you're like, oh my god, it's been like, okay, I don't yeah. Care. I remember that we really didn't talk that much about, like, Christmas stuff. Like, we talked about Christmas on the last show, but we didn't talk about, like, what we got or anything like that. Like, I got a lot of cool stuff, and you got a lot of cool stuff. I was pretty very happy with everything, pretty much. Like, I didn't get any anything too horribly crappy this year. Yeah. Uh, unless you count, like, gift cards to places I never go. Oh, yeah. This is a recurring sucks. theme for like me gift every Christmas. Cards to, see, I got, like, one gift card. And <laughs> it worked out. I was like, sweet. Well, I, I can say this openly because I know that they don't listen to the show, but uh, I, I fucking Panera. Okay, I don't fucking go to Panera. <laughs> you know my opinion on Panera. <laughs> yeah. My opinion on Panera is your opinion on fucking, like, uh, that soup places, place or, yeah, like, Noodles like, and Company noodles, or something. Yeah, like, Tom and Chi. Like, all those, Tom like, and fucking Chi. Yeah, they're the, the bane of my regular existence. regular shit. Like, you, oh. you are Tim Hortons plus $20. Like, yeah. you're fucking... There's nothing special about Panera other than it's overpriced and, like, whatever. Like, I really just dis- dislike it heavily. Yeah. And two years in a row now, I've gotten fucking Panera gift cards. And I'm like, who is telling these people I like Panera? Like, are you fucking with me? Is, am I being like, is Ashton Kutcher <laughs> telling people what I want for Christmas? Where's the, where's the Kutch? Yeah, where the fuck's Ashton Kutcher? Because I think he's telling motherfuckers what I want for Christmas. Like, <laughs> I... Get the uh, fat man Panera. <laughs> what the fuck shit? get me that shit. Like, I will never use this. I'm pretty sure there's... Like, I got a $25 gift card from there last year. I'm pretty sure there's still $16 on that fucking thing. Probably. Like, I used it once to get some bagels. Like, Literally. And then it's been sitting in my wallet gathering dust for a year. <laughs> and I did get uh, Olive Garden gift card from my parents, which is always nice. Yeah, that one works out. That one did work out. That was lovely. I do love the Olive Garden, even oh, though it's not yeah. really Italian food. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say it's more so than, like, Fazoli's. Well, yeah, but it's, like, you know, it's like going to a, a quote-unquote Chinese place here. It's like it's not really Chinese food either. As opposed to, like, going to fucking, like, uh, Panda Express, which is the, the McDonald's of big <laughs> Chinese food. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, no, it was, a, it was a good, like, I got some great stuff. A lot of Fallout stuff, of course, which, mm-hmm. trust me, no complaint whatsoever. Um, yeah, I say, I'd say you beat me this year, but, like, I didn't have money. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, did, you did a fine job. I know. Um... I'm trying to remember everything. I can't even remember everything I got. I'm blanking on anything that I got. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's tough like, because there's just a whirlwind like, of yeah, shit. I was just like, there's so much stuff. Uh, I got you a Secret Wars hat, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what else, God? I don't know. A bunch of small stuff. Yeah. Like D and D shirt. Yep. Um, I can't remember everything. The Aquaman plushie. The Aquaman plushie. Yeah. There's there's a couple other things too. 
Um, it's trying hard to remember what like what people got me versus what I got myself. Yeah, no shit. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I got. Oh no, wait, I got that for myself. <laughs> and then there was like, no, I got that for myself. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh, PS, no, I got that for myself. Uh, it was a good. It was a good Christmas. That's the other hard part too. Is like now we have jobs where we have incomes where we can kind of be like, I want that. I'm gonna. Get I'm gonna that. go ahead and get that. We're gonna go get that. Get that thing. Yeah, we're gonna do that. I'm do that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right now, I've been addicted to Horizon Zero Dawn, which I can thank Watson for. Mm. You know, which I have. I actually sent him a message like, "Thank you. This game is awesome." So you know, been playing the shit out of that. The New Year's been interesting so far. I'm going to talk about something I didn't talk about last time. The Browns suck. I'm going to mention that because the the city of Cleveland, and this was not official, but a large group of Browns fans had a perfect season parade. A perfect 0-16 season. <laughs> this did not sit well with the players. Like, at all. <laughs> There's been a big Twitter thing. It was happening yesterday when the, the actual thing happened. Um, a lot of the players were just really furious about it. And in some respect, I understand. But in another respect, you lost 16 fucking games. You lost games. 16 fucking games, dude. Not not even like 16 games you lost horribly. There was at least like three or four yeah. games that you were winning. You were going to win. Uh-huh. And then you fucking dropped the ball. So you know what? Give your fans a break. At least they have a sense of fucking humor about this shit. Because good God. <laughs> it, to me, again, like the Browns fans, uh, uh, rivaled only by Packers fans, are like the most diehard, vehement, unkillable fans yeah. in the NFL. This Oakland is Raider fans. This is telling you that well, fuck, they're about to move to Vegas. Yeah, but their fan base is like fucking pissed um, about it. But the thing is, like, this should tell you that even in the respect that you've lost every game for the last two seasons, but one, your fans are still celebrating you. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, you can get fucking pissy that you're you know pussy ass millionaires that are fucking making all this money and shit, and like getting pissed off and mad because somebody's out there celebrating a fucking perfect season that you failed miserably at. Uh, realize that you still have fans after you've went one and thirty three. Yeah, like, or th- I'm sorry, one and thirty one. Yeah, in the last two seasons, the fact that you still have any fans is astounding. Mm. The fact that you still have jobs. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, the like, fact that you still have jobs. <laughs> like, especially man, their performance. Uh, I mean, you know, you got you got to give them credit. At least they're at least they're, the fans are trying to find something. I mean. I was just like, especially Cleveland fans, man. You got to give them like, because like, not only have they had to deal with the Browns, but shit, the fucking years ago, like a couple of years ago, what LeBron did with yeah. fucking Cavaliers, like going to the Heat and shit, winning a bunch of titles, and then being like, oh, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna be the hero back, and stuff yeah. like that. But like for that Fuck time you. period, it was like their fucking hope and prayer of getting a fucking NBA title was like. Not this here. Is, I'm gonna go do it somewhere else. And then maybe I'll come back and do it. Yeah, for then maybe I'll shit. take pity on you. Yeah. yeah, and then you know, fucking our baseball team. You know, Cleveland. <laughs> we can get to the playoffs. Maybe even get to the World Series. We ain't gonna win it. No. Like you know, they've got like the can get almost their team, and then it never happens. Like so. since the Browns uh, re you know got the franchise again in '99, it's been a cacophony of failure. Yeah. Like uh, just a literal book on like you know how not to run a franchise mm-hmm. there is not there's been one playoff appearance yeah well the problem in is nearly is like, 20 years you've got you've got an owner who can't he's, he's got a vince mcmahon complex mm-hmm. he can't keep his fucking hands out of the goddamn thing and yeah. then recently they just had to get rid of their general manager because they found out their general manager has had a fucking, like bone to pick with the coach so much to the point that he's basically been cock blocking all of the like trades and deals that the coach has been trying to do to get a winning team. Mm-hmm. So, and the fact that other teams find you so fucking deplorable that they actually actively will take a shittier trade so they don't trade a player to you. This is actually a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Belichick in New England. They traded uh, Brady's backup, Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. Well, the Browns wanted him bad. And, like, bid and bid and bid. And Belichick, after the trade was done, because the trade actually went to San Francisco, and the guy was, is flourishing there. Yeah. But he was like, I, I turned it down and I took a worse offer because I didn't want to do that to him. Like, that's a sad world. 
Well, it's also too because like yeah. he's got history. Well, he does too, too, but the thing is, he has he doesn't hate Cleveland. Like he fucking he was not the thing. The Cleveland fans were the ones that sucked, but like uh, that hated him. Yeah, but like he's like I can't do that to somebody. I can't send you to a team where I know that you can't do anything. Yeah, that you're just destined for shit. Yeah, like this is a sorry world. Yeah, like the other teams are like I'll take a shittier trade just so you don't have to go there. Yeah, like fuck me. Like come on. But, uh, yeah, fuck, fuck you bunch of whiny fucking overpaid assholes. Like, you go 0-16, you still, you lucky you still have get, a fucking yeah. job, you still shut the paid, fuck up. Yeah, you still get paid millions to be an 0-16 team, exactly. so, like... I think this just, this continually goes back to them. I'm so fucking tired of people on Twitter. Like, <laughs> Twitter is is the fucking wasteland of the world. It is the, like, the devil! It is the fucking barons of the, the internet. Devil. It is. Like, it is. I'm tired of these fucking people, like, oh, God. But you know what, okay... We can't go too much on sports because I know a lot of our fan base isn't necessarily. No, this is not a sports thing. This is just a Twitter thing. Yeah. Like. Well, no, I was about to bring up the the the, the possible end of the dynasty. So apparently, there's rumors that Brady and Belichick might not be getting along anymore these days. And oh no, they of, hate each other actively. Yeah, and that one of them might be leaving. And then Bob Kraft hates both of them. Yeah. So, but apparently, Bob Kraft likes Brady more than Belichick. He does. So, <laughs> so Belichick might be going to New York, which is where he wants to be anyway. Yeah. Because that's he's been lusting after that New York job since he was an assistant under Bill Parcells when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. That's where he would want to be. Yeah. So this does not shock me. Yeah. And uh, fucking. But I'm saying, can we finally see the end of the dynasty? Good. Of fucking Go cheat in New York Patriot. instead of fucking yeah. uh, Foxborough, you cocksmoke. Mm-hmm. I hate Belichick with every fiber of my being, so whatever. Yeah. This is the son of a bitch that bitch Bernie Kosar. He didn't eat shit and die. That's my childhood that you fucked with, you fucking <laughs> sack of crap. You motherfucker! And for nothing, for Vinny fucking Testaverde, who has about three times more interceptions and touchdowns for his fucking career. That's true. That's and who was. Who only won a Heisman because. Kozar entered the goddamn draft a year early. Yeah. So, fuck you. <laughs> like, anyway, here's my hatred of Twitter. Like, yeah, yeah. Now, the Golden Globes were last night. Oh, yeah. So, so did you see that shit with Justin uh, Timberlake? Did you, is this the thing you were going to say? Because no. Justin Timberlake, this is the thing that I saw. Okay, no. So, the Natalie Portman thing. I didn't. I don't know if I. I okay, you do. Oh, no, no, I did. Uh, it's the director's thing, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah the so, the Justin Timberlake thing. So. Justin Timberlake was there with his wife Jessica Biel, and they were wearing black in support of the Me Too movement and shit. And he was wearing a button, um, also supporting like the, the women's movement and the, the like. The, you know, don't be silent and stuff. And people were just all kinds of fucking screaming all over Twitter and calling him a hypocrite because he just did a Woody Allen movie. And Woody Allen has been you know accused of doing shit multiple times, but been but no charges have ever been filed. And no proof has ever been put forth other than just conflicting stories from multiple different people. Like, yeah. it's not like Weinstein where there's like, it's the same story from hundreds of people, you know. Well, that's that thing we talked about now. It's no longer about actual no. proof. It's just the accusations and then the guilty or not guilty verdict by public opinion. Do I think Woody Allen's a piece of shit? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, I think I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily call him like a rapist or anything like that, or a sexual predator. But he has a very unhealthy obsession with uh, teenage girls. Yeah, like extremely unhealthy. Yeah, and has and he's uh, it is seventies, eighty years old now. Like, dude, get the fuck out of here with that yeah. shit. Like, you're creepy and you're fucking. Yeah, you need to stop. But I mean, yeah. You know. And I'm like, everybody's calling Justin Timberlake a hypocrite. I'm like, here's the thing though, like. Uh, I don't. I don't agree with that. This is a, this is going to be a weird simile, but like uh, Pete Rose betting on baseball, right? Yeah. But then, then they said you can't be in the Hall of Fame because of that. I don't agree with that either, because what does it have to do with your career? I mean, the thing that you would be in the Hall of Fame for is being a baseball player that was amazing. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the fact that you fucked up and bet on baseball afterwards. Was when it, you were was a coach. It, no, I was saying, it was during, when he was a manager. It was when he was, yeah, but it was still when he was connected to it. So that's the thing. Like, I don't agree that he should have the lifetime ban. No. But I agree that he should have been banned for a certain point. Of time. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's definitely. So I feel like it's a similar thing in my mind. Like, But I mean, um, with Justin Timberlake, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, he's trying to be a serious enough actor yes. you know do all these movies and stuff like that so you're basically gonna be like okay 
but you can't be in movies directed by these guys. Like, uh, you can't mm-hmm. be in a Scorsese, you can't be in these guys. And it's like, okay. It's the same shit. Like, uh, you know, I don't hear people out there yelling at motherfuckers for being in Roman Polanski movies, considering that motherfucker's been in exile from this country for the last 40 years because of being accused of fucking an underage girl. Yeah. So, but that's totally, you know, a big honor to go do a Roman Polanski movie off in Europe somewhere because he can't film here. Yeah. But you're going to throw shit at Justin Timberlake for doing a Woody Allen movie. What yeah. about the people who've done repeated Woody Allen movies? Yeah. What about the people that are like perennial? What about Diane Keaton, who's like the biggest fucking feminazi on the face of the earth, but she's done multiple Woody Allen movies? Yeah. Where's the shit for her? Yeah. Like, it's because he was openly wearing something. And- yeah. Yeah, that's pretty shit. God forbid he's trying to fucking show some solidarity for his wife and other women yeah, that he's friends uh, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, God forbid. That, and like, David Krummeltz is also in that movie, and he came out and kind of on Twitter and was like, I'm kind of ashamed of myself for doing it. And people were like, oh, you're ashamed of yourself for doing it, but you were fine doing it at the time. He was like, yeah, I was fine doing it at the time, but in retrospect, I find it to be a poor decision on my part, and I'm sad that I did it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. The, he's People change their mind, shit changes, nobody's perfect. It was like, and when did he do the movie? That's the thing. Like, these people act like they should have known all this stuff, like, beforehand. Like, you should have known Well, all the thing is, the stuff. person who accused Woody Allen of, of what he did was Ronan Farrow, uh, who was his stepdaughter. And this is supposedly happened years ago when she was a teenager. Mm-hmm. But there's never been definitive proof, A, that it happened, other than her own account of it. And her account has not been consistent. Yeah. Um, and they, it was investigated by police at the time, investigated by the DA, and there was never enough to bring any charges, or never even enough to say, like, well, we think he did it, but we still can't bring charges. Like, yeah. And there's been conflicting accounts of it, and Alan himself says that it's because Mia Farrow hates him, basically, and, like, she, it's collusion. And I don't know if it happened. I yeah. know that he has a creepy obsession with teenage girls, so yeah. it wouldn't fucking surprise me. Yeah. In the least. But, I don't know what, like... I hate to say this, but, like, innocent until proven guilty, like... It is a true... But, like I said, it, that's how it is in the actual law system. Now, it's pretty much you're innocent or guilty until the public opinion decides. No, and that's what it is. It's that, it's that fucking episode of Orville, like, becoming reality, yeah. or the episode of Black Mirror that's similar to it, like... Yeah. The, you know, the majority voting and shit, like, uh, online voting is, like, you know, outlawing your shit. Like, I just... Fuck, fuck the way that this is going. I, I don't care for this at all. No, I saw the thing where Natalie Portman made the nice little jab at the fucking... Yeah, at here are your all-male nominees for direct, Best Director. Yeah. yeah, which is, you know what, that's fucking true, because I'm sorry, I feel like Patty Jenkins deserved, uh, deserved to be in there, because Wonder Woman was a fucking amazing movie and was mm-hmm. groundbreaking for what it was, and you're telling me that, like, the list of motherfuckers in there... Okay, I know who won it. Uh, congratulations to him. Love him as a director and stuff like that. That movie's been out all of like two fucking three weeks or some shit, and you're telling me he won fucking best director for that, and she wasn't even in the goddamn list? No, fuck that. That's bullshit. Like, I'm yeah. sorry. Like, and the other one of the other interesting pieces of news was Deborah Messing. Uh, they interviewed her on the red carpet. And it was E who was interviewing her, and she chose to take that time to call out E for their shitty treatment of one of their anchors for E News Live, who quit because she found out that her male com- counterpart was making three times as much as her. And they were like, "Yeah, what are you going to do? Like, <laughs> so... Wow. Yeah, she on live TV, on E, being interviewed by an E person, was like, hey, fuck you for this thing that you did. It's shitty. You suck. <laughs> So good on her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, you know, apparently people felt it was one of those events where it's like, let's literally just fucking, like, call motherfuckers out. Let's just and, drop you know, salt on the world. Yeah. Like, let's do and it. And you know what? I'm okay with it. Yeah. I am completely, completely okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was enough fun. of my hatred of Twitter and modern society. Oh, yeah. I am the crotchety old man yep. you know, shaking my cane at the children in the yard. <laughs> in my yard, you damn Twitter kids. Like, <laughs> I wonder what would happen if they just like EMP'd the whole fucking like thing. Like, if your Instagram, your Twitters, your Tumblrs, all that I'm shit. you, there'd be like a mass suicide like, of millennials. <laughs> oh, God. One could only hope. Like, <laughs> fuck. You know. Which you and I count as, by the way, which is just really depressing. Whatever. <laughs> that's fine. I don't care. Like, that good. I'm the crotchety old millennial that's like, yeah. I don't really give a fuck. But let's talk about something more fun. Let's talk about January, the Barons of the Box Office. Oh, wow. Yes. 
the time where the studios release whatever turd that they think may make money, but probably won't. Like and horror movies. This and horror movies. This is a weird thing. This yeah. is like for some reason, like not October when it used to be. What was it like? Yeah, fifteen years ago, we used to get like all of our horror movies in October. Yeah. Now it's January. Like. Apparently, hey, what's a good time for us to scare the shit out of you when it's like two degrees out and you got nothing better to do? Like, <laughs> this is the thing. I don't, I don't say that I get this. Like, why January is a good time to fucking throw out horror movies? But apparently, it is. Well, I understand now, but like back like a couple years ago, I was like, why? But now, honestly, I think most horror movies get buried because mm-hmm. if you look at what they normally do numbers wise, except for a few exceptions. The stuff that's coming out in spring, summer, and even late, late summer into fall yeah. usually will bury a horror movie. Yeah, they just it's don't true. get the numbers they want anymore. So I guess I get that to some extent. Yeah, but it's still just so weird. Because God knows in October, I want to see a good horror movie. And they're very rarely out and then. <laughs> never out. It's like, okay... God forbid. Since anyway. we're on the subject of horror movies, let's All talk right. about the trailers that we were watching. So, uh, the the teaser trailer for the second uh, chapter. chapter of It came out, and yep. it does not disappoint. No. It's only about 30 seconds, but it's just enough to yep. fucking wet your whistle and now, the get funny, you excited. The funny thing is, though, there's already a bunch of like fan-made ones yeah. that are just like swamp the shit out of it. So, for you trying to find the actual one is kind of hard. Like yeah. That's the other part that it's kind of been pissing people off is like they saw the teaser but then like you know other people have been like okay I've seen one like I saw one that had fucking a bunch of different actors that I'm like I know for a fact that are not in this movie what the fuck Jake Gyllenhaal what yeah. the fuck Amy Adams Jake Gyllenhaal uh, Tobey Maguire thank fucking, fucking god yeah none of these motherfuckers yeah, are in this I'm movie. like what the shit uh, they, they had Heater or not Heater but um god the one who did Trainwreck with um uh, Hater. Mm. Hater was in it. Which I was like, actually, I wouldn't mind if Hater was in it and stuff like that. I mean, it'd be a fun one to scare the shit out of. Um, but I think it had, it had the uh, the one guy from the Key and Peele horror movie. Oh, uh, yeah, that guy's good. Yeah, and then it had... Uh, God, what the, what's the redheaded name? Uh, one. I think she was on Mad Men. Uh, I don't know. Christine... With the boobs? Yeah. Hendrix. Yep. Sorry. It looked like it was her. I don't know. It was, it was really quick, but it looked really good. And you know, I think they did it the right way. I think they shot them back to back before the first one even came out. So that way they didn't let public opinion of the first one sway how they were going to do the second one. Yeah. Which I think is smart. If you have a vision in your head of how these two movies are supposed to be, I feel like you should just back to back it so that way you're like it stays consistent because there's been too many times where you see a movie where it turns into like a sequel or you know a trilogy or something like that where it's like here's how the original was and then here's how the like the following sequels were yeah Matrix is a perfect example um god what are some other ones pretty much anything Matrix else. is the biggest example yeah oh one. yeah because like thing. if you look at the first one versus the two it was like uh yeah you could so tell this was not a original like, oh no it's totally supposed to be a, so it's supposed to be a trilogy no uh, Wachowski people Sisters? Wachowski <laughs> siblings you know Wachowski humans <laughs> Wachowski mouth breathers Wojciechowski uh, <laughs> Wojciechowski uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't fucking know what so, that is no, but it looks good, and the first one's supposed to come out on DVD here soon, which means I can actually get to see it. Yeah. Um, um, I'm jazzed for this really awful movie that we were watching the trailer. I don't, okay, okay, I don't know if it's awful, but if the trailer is any indication, it is. <laughs> what? I'm just going to go ahead and say, oh, are you talking about the Truth or Dare one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I thought we were talking about the Asylum one. No, I'll talk about that one, too. Yeah, but it's, just, it's an Asylum movie. We went down a rabbit hole there, but, yeah. like, no, it's yeah. called Truth or Dare, and I, I oh, urge you gosh. so deeply to go watch this trailer. Oh, God. Yeah, watch the trailer. It I, I looks need to just so... Watch the trailer and then post on the, the page, because I want to like... hear what everybody's reaction to this is, because it is, like... We talked about this, where I feel like now there are so very few original horror movies, yeah. like ideas coming out, that I feel like now we've gotten to that level where they're starting to hybridize, like yeah. the movies and stuff. Like the because, Happy like, Death Day, where they like 
you know, did Final Destination cross with Groundhog Day. Yeah, like, but this <laughs> one is like Final Destination mixed with um, shit. What would be the, what was the other one? I'm trying to think of. I don't know. I'd have, to, know, I'd like, have to watch it again and stuff like that because it's like a weird like possession game thing. It's almost actually you know what it is. It's like uh, Final Destination and that weird VHS one or like yeah. the Grudge where it, or not the Grudge but the, uh, the the Ring where you like mm-hmm. send the tape and they have to watch it or they play the game or some shit like that. It's kind of like and like that. Jumanji. Like once yeah. you start playing, you can't stop. Yeah. Like evil this, game. Yeah. Like but it's you know okay. <laughs> Even taking that premise. You could still make a decent horror movie yeah. out of it, but then they go and do the worst thing possible, and like you'll see it when you watch this trailer. They do this weird fucking like <laughs> I don't even know how I want to describe. I don't want to tell you like, exactly. Okay, if you've seen eighty nine Batman, it's like, so beyond even no, that. But it's that's like what the it keeps reminding level, me yeah, of, like, like when uh, the Joker like infects motherfuckers with Smilex, yeah, and they like die with the big weird grin on their yeah. face. Like this is what that looks like, or. This is like, of course, I'm. John like was so almost spawn. Like, well, yeah, that too. Yeah. I was gonna say, but uh, if you're gonna go super fucking nerdy and obscure, like Star Trek Enterprise, Doctor Flox, yeah, like smiling on there, where it's like this disturbing CG smile that goes like way the, the fuck unnaturally yeah, up their the, face. Yeah, they to the dare giant creepy smile. Yeah, like, and I'm the like, eyes get all. I don't weird. understand how this game works exactly. So okay, well, I've, I've kind of gathered a little bit of it. So basically, <laughs> like. The original premise, I guess, is like this one guy gets a girl and her friends to come someplace, and basically they're all like, oh, truth or dare, and they're doing the things, and then she, her friends are like, oh, truth to the guy, I think his name's Carter, and they're like, what's your intentions with our friend, blah, 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 you know, your atypical, like, duff friend or some shit like that. <laughs> oh, she Not, the duff, But yeah. she wasn't she's like, cute duff, she's but, like the cute duff, yeah. she's like the more like, you know, our uh, nerdy, you know, cute friend, uh, what's your intentions? He's like, actually, my intentions were to get pick a girl who uh, could get her and all her friends up here that I could trick into doing this yeah. because I'm completely okay with strangers dying if it means I get to live. And then he just gets up and walks out and they're yeah. all like, what the fuck? And then he basically tells her, like, the game is real. And then as I've watched the trailer a couple times, what I think it is is, like, the game itself is almost like an entity. Yeah. And, like, at some random point, like, they say basically say you have to play the game. You either have to do the truth or you have to do the dare. Or you die. Or you die. And uh, what happens is, is, like, the game takes over the person for a sec and basically goes, like, truth or dare. And then, like, you pick one. Yeah. But you don't even really necessarily, like, I guess in the beginnings of the game you get to kind of pick, but then the game starts being like, oh, you're all picking truth? No dare and then like you have to do it and if you don't you fucking die and it's weird I don't know I think we should adapt the same sort of premise but we should like do it with hungry hungry hippo yeah (laughs) (laughs) sorry or Or like ants in the pants like (laughs) (laughs) trouble like (laughs) you gotta pop the bubble (laughs) Horrifying oh, smile. Yeah. Like, you know what? Monopoly. Your head turns into the pop matic bubble. Bob, like, Monopoly. Nobody yeah. will ever win. We'll all just die. Because <laughs> nobody ever fucking... Hot place. Hot bottom rock. To my knowledge, I have never, ever finished a game of Monopoly. So I, don't I haven't even finished been. many, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't know you could finish a game of Monopoly. I'm like, what's the end point here? The like, end of yeah. Monopoly is always the same. Somebody gets pissed off and flips, flips the board. The table. Yeah, that's the, to me, that's the end of it. And I'm like, I don't know what the actual end end to Monopoly is. <laughs> so I don't know how that... That would be like the never-ending horror story. Um, but yeah, it just... the What really killed it was that fucking smiley face. Like, it's just such a fucking, like, random slap-in-the-face CG thing that you're like, oh. It's supposed oh. to be creepy, and what it turns out to be is just hilarious. Yeah. Every time. It's like, okay, that just... It just really takes you out of it. Like, so here's another be... thing I need to tell horror directors. Okay, like graphic death scenes are cool, but if they become too graphic or too realistic or like uh, mock realistic, they become funny at some point. Like in the trailer, and then spoilers or whatever. But there's like the, this guy who's part of the game is like 
uh, the the game like takes over some girl and, and dares him to show his dick to like this oh yeah bar he stands, crowd. He stands yeah. up on a pool table and he's like, <laughs> so he's, uh, like he's about to show it. And yeah. Somebody's like, seen it, wasn't impressed. Yeah, and he's like, oh fuck this fuck shit. Fuck you there. And he goes to like step down and then all of a sudden the weird thing <laughs> takes over his head and he steps on the ball and his foot slips and he just falls right off and his head hits the edge of the other pool table and it just snaps his shit back. Yeah. And you're like, Oh god! I was like, oh, <laughs> and it was like, you know what? It would have been creepy. Like, it would have been freaky had it not been like right before he does it, he does the weird smiley face and then dies because then it's like it looked like he took a Jerry Lewis yeah, pratfall. Like, like <laughs> I was like, like so lady. Now, so it's like now you're doing like Three Stooges level fucking physical comedy that equals death. Like that's what it really was. Like Three Stooges, Final Destination, go. Like, just. <laughs> It looks really bad. It just really keeps bad. getting more ridiculous oh, as the yeah. trailer goes on. Like, it's just... It, it, all, all believability is just shattered in this thing. It's just... I, I just... I understand why it's coming out in January. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. on the flip side of this, I really want to go see it. Yeah. Like, so fucking much. Not at, like, full price go see <laughs> no, it. No, no, But, like, cheap seats go but see But there is it. no cheap seats anymore. No. They fucking killed our last cheap seats, the bad. Well, seats. I mean, the AMC, we could go see it for, like, Matinee, four, yeah. Yeah, Matinee for, like, <laughs> four bucks or three bucks or some shit. I don't know. That was nothing compared to Five-Headed Shark Attack trailer. Oh, God. <laughs> Obviously, this thing's not going anywhere near a theater, unless there's a video store next to the theater. No, yeah. Yeah, it has an <laughs> asylum attachment to it, so no, it's not ever seen a theater. Because, like, it started with a two-headed shark attack. Okay, well, I guess maybe, like, there could be a mutant two-headed shark. Yeah, I mean, cool, I've seen yeah. shit like that yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Then three heads. All right, well, you're getting a little level of ridiculous, but whatever, okay. Okay. Then four. Okay. okay. Then five. So four on the front... And, and the then tail. the tail is also a head. Which doesn't look like a head. It literally just looks like a floppy dick <laughs> on the end of it. There's a scene at the end of the trailer oh where the five-headed shark jumps out of the water to nom on a fucking helicopter, and it looks like it's got a big gray dick it's just, just flopping, flopping in the wind. Around. Like, like an 80-year-old man fucking <laughs> saggy dick just flopping in the wind. And I'm like... Oh my god! And it has literally no actors I've ever seen. Before, right? No, I mean, no, Asylum no. used to at least put one motherfucker I've seen in there before in these movies. Now I think I think up. once they got past three on this one, they knew they weren't going to get an actor to be in. One it. of them, Rob Van Dam's in. Yeah, like I, I'm trying to remember if it's the same. and one of them, Brooke the Hogan's in too. Yeah, I think it's the third one. Uh, it's just like, a, oh my god, yeah. dude! I'm sure somebody would be desperate enough for a paycheck. And say, did you call Eric Roberts? Like. <laughs> Did you Eric, call Roberts, Eric, Eric, Eric Roberts is on the way back up, son. He ain't, he ain't he's doing still, He's nothing. still doing shitty movies. Oh, yeah. But not, like, not Did you call Gary Busey? Yeah. Like, I'm sure he's not working right now. No, Gary Busey's too fucking crazy. <laughs> That's the problem. He's no, like, I want to be the shark! No, yeah, nobody <laughs> can fucking... He looks scarier than the shark. Everybody would just be scared to be next to Gary Busey. Yeah, here's Busey. the fucking movie. Five-headed Gary Busey. Let's yeah. watch that movie. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have you seen how he looks now? <laughs> Jake can hunt him. Okay, hey. Yeah, Jake will hunt down his dad. <laughs> Here's the next one. Uh, my dad, the five headed Gary yeah, Busey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, so there was that. That movie uh, Then you said you watched the Slender Man one. I did. Um, it looks creepy, mm -hmm. but I don't have high hopes for it. Yeah. Like. I don't know. It's just another movie based on some like weird internet creepy pasta. Like, yeah, this is a weird thing. Like, I get like that's kind of the what urban legends have become now. Mm -hmm. Weird like internet creepy pasta shit. But like, I don't know. I don't find Slenderman legend to be very creepy myself. Yeah, but I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's like terrifying and shit. And I can see it has the elements to be that yeah. and stuff, but I guess it's just kind of one of those like, eh, does it actually it hit you that way? It looked like one of those fucking horror movies that have come out lately that are trying really hard to be artsy fartsy looking. Yeah, I hate that. And then I'm like, and I have a soft weenie now. Yeah, like, I'm ridiculously. And I literally know no one in this movie. Yeah. Uh, except for one dude who plays like the main character, uh, one of the main character's dads. Like, and even he's like a kind of obscure character actor like um, the main chick is Joey King she looks familiar um, let me see she's I think she was in one of the Conjuring movies oh yeah that's the uh, she was in Flash that's the one that uh, was the purple haired girl. yeah I vaguely remember that she was like a yeah. throwaway villain on Flash yeah she was uh, Magenta yeah and then she was in 
scroll down. She was in some of the other ones stuff. I'm trying to yeah, remember. Zero memory of this chick. Yeah. She was in some other shit. She She's one of those girls who like is probably about twenty something but looks like she's seven. <laughs> she has a weird tiny face. But like, she's got like weird features. Like Yeah. You know. So that exists. I I don't know. I wasn't But then we saw the man. trailer for the uh, what was it? The Midnight Man. The Midnight Man. That one looks interesting. Um, Robert England is always interesting to me. Yeah, and then, another uh, one of those boogeyman type characters. Yeah. always fun. And then what's her name from Insidious? Um, Lynn Shay, Lynn Shay. Um, who's fucking amazing. Yeah, this one. I mean, at least it stays true to I think the genre of mm-hmm. like what it's doing, like the weird like game possession type like boogeyman stuff. Mm-hmm. But they do it in a. They look like they play it smart in the way like they did Insidious and like mm. uh, the Babadook and stuff where it was like things where it's like less is more. Yeah. Like the less you see of it, the more it'll fucking scare the shit out of you and don't give it a giant CG grinny mouth. Um, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Insidious though, they did uh, the, the new Insidious just came out this past weekend and did extremely well. Mm. For a horror movie, you know, up against Star Wars is still popular. I mean, like, Jumanji took number one at $36 million, but Insidious was right behind it at twenty nine, and that's pretty good for the fourth movie in the series. Yeah. Like... Which is kind of, like, especially, too, good. considering yeah. from what they said with this one, is it's kind of spinny-offy, prequel-ish, so mm-hmm. usually things like that don't necessarily... They only do about maybe 40% of what the originals usually do. Yeah, exactly. And so that's pretty good, considering... So, and then we got our shows, and by that I mean we haven't been watching any of them. The only thing I've been <laughs> watching, I just started yesterday this amazing fucking show on Netflix called Mindhunter, uh-huh. which talks about, like, the foundations of what would become, like, the behavioral analysis unit yeah, of the FBI, the DIU, yeah. um, what it was called behavioral sciences, mm-hmm. and uh, just, like, the building of it. It's really extremely well acted and very, very solidly put together. Well, we know, you all know that we watch the DC shows pretty, you know, uh, heavily and stuff. Uh, Right now, the big kind of shake-up about that is the the whole deal with uh, Black Lightning and Supergirl. Yeah. Something you and Um, I talked about. They're putting Black Lightning um, in Supergirl's spot and putting Supergirl on the shelf until uh, later on in the year. Yeah. For the back half of Earth Earth season. Yeah. Uh, they're doing it. They're, they're doing it basically uh, to give Black Lightning a stronger chance of picking up an audience. Yeah, but this is not what the audience feels is yeah. happening. <laughs> the audience feels like this is a very much like. Mm, we yeah, people are it. nervous that it's not a good sign for Supergirl, which I get yeah. that. And like, uh, I don't know. There's there's been trouble in the production. There's been issues and in, with um, Andrew Kreitzberg and shit getting you know into trouble like he was one the co-showrunner of Supergirl so yeah. like it, it definitely delayed things and like they needed some time to do reshoots and stuff so that's part of it also part of it is that right now it's downtrending ratings wise um the strongest of the DC shows oddly enough is Legends mm-hmm. and then Flash and Arrow and then kind of Supergirl's in the rear yeah so uh, CW was saying they're behind it and they're saying it's still strong. They're saying that they want to put new episodes on closer to the summer because there's less new programming then, so it's a little wait for them to extend their new programming. Yeah. Which I get that to some extent. But this change is, is taking Supergirl out of the sweeps part of the season. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I also believe that part of this is I don't think they have a lot of confidence in Black Lightning. Because it's it is not necessarily a named character like you know Green Arrow being the first, and the way they did it was pretty smart. They were able to establish a character who was pretty well known, but not necessarily maybe as well known as some of the rest of them. Mm-hmm. And he was the kickoff one, so that was good. Then you bring out Flash. Flash is a very well known character. It's already mm-hmm. had its own series. So that one was good. Supergirl. Obviously, that one, people know that one. You attach it with Superman, that's smart. The Legends show was smart because it was played off of pretty much characters from all the shows. Mm. You know, so that was smart. Black Lightning, again, the problem with Black Lightning that I'm seeing is right now the lack of anything. Like, I understand what story they're telling, but I don't understand where this thing fits in. Like, I have not got a definitive, it is connected, it is not connected, what the fuck is going on. Because for me... It's really hard if you're just going to have this one show that's not connected to the Arrowverse. 
Like, if you're just going to be like, okay, these all four are, and Black Lightning's not. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, and I and I feel like what's going to happen is people are going to give less of a fuck about it because it's yeah. not connected. I get because that. Because that's what people want. They want that interconnected. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that he has to, like, jump over or something like that, but you want to see those, like, fun little, like, nods, like... Like you and I have said, I think it would be great if it was on the same world as Supergirl to kind of kind of give her more mm-hmm. fleshed out in her world, you know, instead of necessarily putting them all on Ollie's world. Yeah. Because Ollie's world seems like the new kids, where it seems like Supergirl's world has already pre-established heroes, like mm-hmm. Batman's been mentioned on there. Um, you already know Superman. So it would be good to have Black Lightning because he's already been a retired hero. And yeah. Shit. So I think that's also kind of me- maybe messed with the fans and stuff is like the whole like they made such a big deal about it and then there was nothing for a while. Yeah, it is kind of strange that like really all we've ever gotten is the one trailer. Yeah. And it's about to come out in a yeah. couple in like less than two weeks. Yeah. But all we've ever gotten is a single trailer. Yep. And which, no, and nothing about the story. Nothing else yeah, about like wh- just, where it's that connected. That is very odd. Yeah, like unless they're trying to just keep it super under, like oh, it's a big surprise and stuff. And I'm like, that could go one of two ways: really good or really bad. I feel like, like you got to build a groundswell for a character that's not necessarily a, yeah, a, you know, a super mainstream. Like mm-hmm. you kind of have to build some support somewhere in that. You have to try to get hype going, and there's not a lot of hype. I mean, there is some level of hype because of the mystery of it, but like, but, but they've not been like yeah. even with that. They're still like only just sprinkle sprinkle yeah. a little here just to keep you remembering that it's coming out. Right. Have a fun smell in your trees. Uh, just you know, sprinkling it ever so often. Um, but I mean, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, when any of the rest of them were coming out, they build up a lot of hype about it. Shit, the fucking crossovers have like the most hype whatsoever, and like Black Lightning, You're such a dick. Not, not everybody much. does that. What? When they change their earrings, everybody. <laughs> But you're not changing. You're, just, you're literally no. I was cleaning it off. Took it out, rubbed it a few times, <laughs> fucking your fingers a few times, and then put it back in. I was like, not necessary. You having fun with that? Not necessary. <laughs> it's a weird smell. All right, you know it. This is what I did. Dude, yeah, mine is worse. Black, I, I, I don't want to know about that. Yeah, shit. you don't want to know about when they get. This is this the main big. like yeah. thing about I would never gauge because of shit like that. It's horrific. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, we, when they get bigger, you have to get, like, specific materials because then it starts producing more. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, sometimes it's like if it just gets moved out a little bit, you're like, oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> it's one of the things I don't miss about having big gauges. I'm like, oh, it's cool. I'll just let them shrink. Actually, speaking of which, apparently one of mine has fallen out. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I had a clear one in here. It's probably in my... Oh, yeah, probably. It's probably <laughs> in my bed somewhere. Well, that was really gross. It was. Uh, but, yeah, no, I get it. Like, I don't know. You're, you're playing a dangerous game here. Yeah. So I hope that it does well. I'm not <laughs> super confident. I don't even know if necessarily they are either. I, I kind of no, wonder... No, are. I'm kind of wondering if it was one of those, like people expected them to pick it up because nobody else was so they did and then they're like oh well if we just say we at least tried and then it let it fall then we could not have to do it you know mm-hmm. or see if there's a thing and then put it on that fucking um, the new uh, DC all access thing or whatever yeah which like that Titan show is much more fucking buzz building and exciting oh it's- yeah dude they've been doing all the drops for the yeah. costumes those costumes look so fucking, amazing. fucking good like I'm okay in the the CW shows, I will have, I will say there have been costumes I loved and costumes I hated. You know, God, Smallville yes. had good costumes; it had bad costumes. Oh my god, it had bad. Costumes. Mostly had bad costumes. Blue Beetle, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, no, the Booster was a good costume. Big bad Blue Beetle boy. <laughs> yeah, but that Booster Gold was a yeah, fucking good. great costume. Um, but even with like the Arrowverse shows, there have been good costumes and bad costumes. And so far, from what I've seen. Out of the Titans thing, they've been the most comic accurate, mm. and they both and they all look good. Like, so I don't know. I mean, I'll 
I'm still going to reserve judgment until I see the rest of the costumes and, yeah. you know, see who else. But I don't know. We'll see what goes on there. We're getting, we're just past the hour marks. So I want to quickly mention that, like, um, we talked a little bit about Chris Jericho doing the match in New Japan. Um, yeah, they had that match. Kenny Omega. And it, uh, all the reviews that I've read so far are saying that, like, this may be the last great Jericho match. Oh, yeah? Because, like, you know, age being a factor, and yeah. he's been a little slower in the last couple of years, but they're saying that, like, I haven't got to see it yet. I saw stills from it, and yeah. it looked like it was an epically vicious match, like, between yeah. him and Kenny. Like, I mean, the, most of the reviews I read were basically like, this may be the last great Chris Jericho match we see. Yeah. And he's apparently sticking with and doing more New Japan stuff, so I don't know if he's just, like, done doing WWE for a while or what but. I I could see where he would want to kind of maybe get mm-hmm. away from them and stuff because it seemed like the last run through he had they basically just wanted to use his namesake to kind of push off Kevin Owens yeah like oh one use one Canadian to push it was a great off program I mean it was well, it was a great program but at the end of it did it really feel like it affected Jericho that much no like really. no it it kind of more of a was like on the heels of Jericho, we made this great program. Well, the thing is, Jericho stuff. has, like, made his, basically his mission in the last, like, ten years almost to basically just go in and put guys over. Mm-hmm. Like, and, that, that and that's what great. He does. But, like, I feel like in this one, too, they really kind of made him the joke of the whole thing. And it's like, he can do funny stuff, but I feel like at the end of it, if that's all he was, was just the joke. Mm-hmm. I kind of was like, I feel... Maybe he needed to go do something where it was more serious, where it was more like, you know, okay, let's get to some some crazy shit with him and somebody. No, I totally get that. Yeah. I'm excited to uh, to see how it turns out. I'm excited for the Rumble. Um, I'm excited for this mixed tag thing that they're doing. Yeah, so do you want, you want to talk about that? The, uh, the, yeah, the, the, talk about we can Because, yeah. I mean, we don't have a lot. They still no. haven't finished it. But they've been every so often showing the pairs they've been doing the like Raw does a match up or pair up and then you know doing the thing so the first team up they did was Alexa Bliss found out her partner is going to be Braun Strowman which <laughs> that's an interesting an odd disparity in size uh, unless, he yeah. literally, I, unless I see Braun Strowman literally hurl Alexa Bliss at somebody like a football <laughs> like the fastball special that's what I want to see I want to see the fastball special <laughs> like but you know what? I think it could work. You know, because she has like they with the Nia Jax thing, they've kind of played her as this like she's really good at controlling the Giants kind of thing. Like, oh, I can suit the Giants into being on my team. Cool. Uh, for SmackDown, their first pairing was uh, Bobby Roode and Charlotte Flair. Match made in heaven. Match made in robe heaven. Yep. Uh, so you know, glorious. <laughs> yeah. So woo, glorious. Uh, glorious. So that was good. Uh, the second pairing was Sasha Banks uh, got paired up with Finn Balor, which she had actually talked about. That's who she wanted to be paired up with, like one of them. And I think that should've would be Becky, huh? Should've been Becky. Oh God, it both of their been accents Becky. in perfect yeah. harmony. But uh, <laughs> I know, but it's still great. Yeah, it would have been great. <laughs> Nobody would have understood that whole team. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised it actually wasn't Finn and Bailey because they're really good friends. Yeah. Uh, but I honestly, I think that's because right now, any uh, anybody attaching anything to Bailey is kind of a fucking Bailey is ship. not. Yeah, Bailey's a sinking ship right now. Yeah, they, they've talked about that so far. Like uh, Triple H did a fucking a real shoot on NXT stars that cannot make it on the uh, roster, the main roster, mm-hmm. and I think she was one of the ones he was talking about and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's like there's a there's a smart difference between an NXT audience and a main roster audience. There is. That, you know, that's the thing. Um, then the next uh, pairing they did for SmackDown, this one was uninspiring. Not surprising. They put Rusev with Lana. Uh, you know, what? shocking, Lana, shocking. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. You know that they they're keeping her going on that like she can wrestle thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm mistaken. Yeah, 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 I don't really agree with that one. Then uh, the next one. Now this one was interesting because of the whole program they've been running. So Nia Jax was finding out who her partner was, and obviously she wanted it to be uh, Enzo, 
because apparently she's God. Can you just imagine the logistics of that sex? <laughs> oh God. God. Because apparently she has the hots for Enzo, character-wise, not in real yeah. life. Um, so much to the point that even like in the sh- they're, on the roster, they've been having her and Alexa have issues because of it. Like basically, Naya was leaving her for Enzo, um, and instead of getting Enzo, <laughs> she got teamed up with fucking Apollo Cruz. Fucking and Titus World. This is the other part that's fucking hilarious. It's not just Apollo. She got teamed up with like Titus Worldwide, which now is Apollo, Titus, and Dana Brooke, and they're all now just acting like a bunch of loudmouth motherfuckers. Like, like, hey, how can we shit. create like a team of jobbers? Yeah, like, and that's literally what it was. And I kind of feel bad for Dana Brooke because she's actually good. Like, she kind of you know, if you had given her what she had originally had, she was a lot better of a performer. And then you stuck her with fucking Charlotte Flair and buried her. Um, I mean, she could have been with Charlotte for, like, half the time that she was, and it would have yeah. been fine, but I felt they drugged that out too fucking long. Yeah. Um, so now, and she, of course, is all like, oh, God, no, and, like, don't touch me, and all kinds of stuff. It's just very, and Kurt Angle's just laughing his ass off, because he's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so there was that and then the final one that I saw was uh, Jimmy Uso was going to find out who he was being teamed with and I'm, I'm, nobody's surprised who it was going to be they flip off the lights and then you hear fucking Naomi's music shit and uh, you see the like light up fur jacket thing in the glasses and then Jimmy's all like oh yeah and fucking uh, she jumps into his like jumps on him and it's like yeah and then they flip on the lights and it's not Naomi it's Daniel Bryan in her <laughs> Her glasses and fur coat, and Jimmy's all like, "What the, f-? you know, like what the fuck?" And he's like, "He's like, sorry, man, I just wanted to do the music thing. It was awesome and stuff." But he's like, "Here's your real part." And he turns around and there's fucking Naomi and shit like that. And she's like, "Can I have my jacket back?" And he's like, "Yeah." But I, I thought that was actually kind of funny considering. But then, yeah, so they got teamed up. Which I think it's pretty cool. I think, I think the concept cool. of having this this thing is really cool. Yeah. I enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to seeing what what comes of it. Mm-hmm. Now, really interesting. Yeah. Now, the 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 big rumor mill is, of course, the Rumble because now we've got the men's Rumble and the women's Rumble, same rules, right? Which they they came out and said, "What's good for the guys is good for the girls." Which I like that they're still doing. Like Stephanie's staying true to that whole like they are superstars across the board. There's not like men are above the women or anything, so they're making them. You know that, but there's been a lot of rumors on both the men's and the women's of who they're going to have oh, show yeah. up because there's always at least a couple big surprise entries into the rumble. Yeah. Now you have two completely different rumbles. I've heard talks of like Rey Mysterio. I've heard talks of um, oh god, what's her name? Trish Stratus, like. You know, there's been a lot of rumors of possible TNA stars that are coming in. Um, I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Because, like, guys roster, 30 dudes, completely understandable. Um, Women's roster, 30 women. I feel like they're going to have to start getting some of those women that they had from the, uh, what was it, the women's uh, women's tournament? Yeah. Yeah. Which, honestly, there are a bunch in there that I would have thought would already at least be on the NXT roster. I'd love for him to see him bring in that big fucking blonde Russian woman. Uh, She could not pass their physical. I actually read an interview. She was on uh, Edge and Christian's podcast. She couldn't and pass their physical? She couldn't pass their physical because she has a back problem or a neck problem or something, and she couldn't pass the uh, their physical to get a contract because they were going to give her a contract. But she couldn't pass the contract, the physical for the contract. Well, it's interesting that they would have her do the, the, the tournament to begin with then. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, um, it's different rules because you don't technically a, an employee. Yeah, it was like a it's contractor. It's invitational thing. sort yeah. of thing. And, but, and the thing that. is, okay, that again, that's a thing too because – Fucking, they call all of them independent contractors. So again, you could say, but like it's different rules they have for when you're part of the quote unquote main roster, like or roster in general. Yeah. Like, so eh. I feel like that one's kind of bullshit because yeah, like they've bit. had uh, they've had other women on there that are like, you're telling me 
fucking uh, Nikki Bella's neck is in Tell me Kurt Angle can pass a physical? Yeah, like, like, he motherfucking got on there and did some fucking matches. Yeah. I think that was kind of bullshit. Mm-hmm. But there are plenty of women from that um, that whole tournament run invitational thing that I feel like they could bring in. In fact, I'm pretty sure we saw a couple of them have, actually. The, uh, the one chick from Kentucky just aired. Yeah. And, uh, they're on the SmackDown. I'm bringing yeah. Shayna fucking Baszler's manly ass in there, so... Oh, God, no. God, she looks like a foot. <laughs> you know, if she was bigger in more of, like, a dominating way and stuff, I would be like, okay. But honestly, like, stacked-wise, she's not really all that, like, dominating physicality-wise. She's just, you yeah. know... A little bit more muscular. Actually, she's not even really that muscular. She's just like lean muscle, very dudeish looking, and apparently she's just gonna mean mug people into a one two three count. Like, <laughs> like fucking, you know who she reminds me of? If fucking uh, not Scott, but Rick Steiner had a daughter that looked like him, that's what she looks like. Like she is the daughter of the dog face gremlin. I oh god. <laughs> For the sake of all of the world, I hope that that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh. no, it does. Her name is Shannon Oh, God, she's awful. The yeah. other, that was the other rumor that I've heard, too. Is like I have heard the rumor strongly that Ronda Rousey is coming. Well, she wants to do something. Uh, whether Dana is okay with it or not. Nah. Dana doesn't have a say anymore. Oh, um, well, yes. Yeah, because she basically, from what I understood, is all but done with UFC. Yeah. Because after that last fucking ass whooping, she's basically pretty much retired from fucking UFC. She'd be a big get. She would. Because she's still like. She's somebody who could draw money legitimately. Yeah. Because she's. In the minds of, of the wrestling fans, she's still a fucking badass. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the thing. Like the the wrestling fan based up versus the UFC fan is the wrestling fan is is more to have like the whole storied career, not yeah. just what your last fight was. Yeah, the UFC yeah. fans are very much like, what? Who have you won against lately? Whereas they, yeah, whereas the W or with the wrestling fans are like. Your whole career, you've basically been dominant. Yeah, you got your ass kicked the last couple of matches. We all, we understand that. Like, yeah. God, as wrestling fans, we all knew Ric Flair's career should have stopped a while ago. <laughs> or Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Or The Undertakers. Yeah. But we rode yeah. with these motherfuckers till the wheels fell off because we love them. Or so, Hogan. Or, yeah. yeah, or Hogan, or Nash, or... Any, any one of them, any yeah. one of them, you know, all Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh uh, my God, Lord. dude! It was yeah. it was Brent the Hitman Hart. Yeah. Any of them. So I mean, the the wrestling fans are more like forgiving and like more to just be like your storied career. We love you for all of it, not just your latest match. So, yeah, I agree for sure. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be interesting to say the least is what comes out of the Rumble. Yeah, definitely. Because I want to see who wins it, and then what these title matches are that they set up. Because if I remember correctly, the title matches that are happening at Rumble is Strowman, Kane, and um, Lesnar. I will tell you that that is a match that I cannot possibly give a fuck about. I have to. Okay, be see, they they're doing this thing that I hate, where they're like, if it had just been Strowman. And, uh, and Lesnar, they've already done it. Yeah, I'd have been, I'd have been okay with it. At least do like a, a, a second one. That's fine. Yeah. Can he finally do it? Can he beat him and stuff? That's great. Cool. You let Goldberg fucking decimate him in less than like a minute both mm-hmm. times. So whatever. But Kane, really? And now they're trying to make it look like Kane is still a viable badass oh. by like having him fucking try and throw Lesnar around. Kane is is you know fifty years old, like needs to be done. Yeah, like five years ago needs to be done. Yeah, is not really all that interested in being full time anymore. Is trying to like do political shit. Like yeah. this this has got to be his last hurrah. Yeah. This has got to yeah, be like yeah, eh, give me one more like little brief spotlight and then yeah. I'm done. Like. Yeah. I th- and I think that's kind of what it is, because, like, you know, his brother <laughs> boogied out. No, Here's the thing about uh, Stro Baby, though. Like, I like what they've been doing with him, but they, they made a mistake when they already let him lose to Brock. Yeah. Because, like, 
some people could lose to Brock and it's fine. Yeah. But this guy they're pushing is the be all end all world beating monster of hell. Yeah. He shouldn't have lost to Brock. He shouldn't no. have been offered up to Brock. No. Like, even though it was more of a legit match, it still shouldn't have happened yet. No. If that, if, you know, because, like, if he's going to lose to Lesnar, then yeah. that still says that Lesnar is the end all be all that can yeah, destroy exactly. everybody. And then you can't, you can't put. Strowman over as the new guy. No. So either A, you got the problem of you can't, you haven't convinced Brock he needs to fucking let go of the goddamn belt, you know, yeah. which I can see because Brock can be like that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Or you A, don't have the, you know, the confidence that Strowman can run a title run by, it, like, you know, himself. Yeah, I agree. So I don't know. Also, it depends on two. Like at the time, I'm trying to remember: were they was Strowman still a heel, or were they were they baby facing him? He was still he was he's kind of transitioning. Okay. Um, I don't know. Like I just I feel like it was not the right time. Yeah. But I do want to mention. I know we're getting. Yeah. No. I just. I, I don't know. I. I feel nothing for it. Like I'm more interested in the like the, the rumble AJ. match itself. Yeah. I'm more interested in what AJ is doing. Like yeah. the Raw title is basically a non copus mentis title for me right Unless now. Unless they because, finally have him lose it. Uh, I guess like putting him in a three way is a way that you can take it off Brock and Brock doesn't look weak. But at this point, he's an absentee champion. Like the Miz is your main champion on but, Raw. No, he's or, gone. Or whoever the fuck is the Intercontinental Champion now. Roman Reigns. Oh, Jesus Christ. I thought he was the U.S. champion. Yeah, the U.S. is on. Uh, oh, I guess you're right. I don't know. I hate Roman Reigns. <laughs> so does Samoa Joe. And Samoa Joe's back. Yeah. Beating the shit out. Of, like, they don't, don't know what to do with Joe. They really don't. Which is sad because, like, Joe is probably one of their best wrestlers that they have. I feel like Joe could have legit taken the belt away from Lesnar. Yeah. The Triple H loves him, but... Um, Vince doesn't Vince doesn't like fat guys, and this is the problem: is Vince <laughs> still has his fingers enough in the business that he can be like, yeah, no. go go play around and try to fail at football again, Vince. Like, let you know the the young folks run the show. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think Triple H will fully get to realize what he thinks the wrestling should no. be and what the fans want until Vince re- lets go of the fucking death grip that he has. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to because it's like Vince. The attitude era is over. You're you're kind of like yeah, we're coming out of the PG era. That's good, uh, but I mean, still you, you're gonna have to let go, dude. And he doesn't want to. So well, he sold a shitload of shares, and he's seems like he's getting serious about doing this new thing and trying to in theory, maybe revive the XFL or start a new football league or something. That's because there apparently is a lot of buzz about it because if they're talking about possibly doing it opposite season of the NFL, you could have a seemingly endless year-long thing of football. You could have... If it works. The thing is that that no one has viably successfully done it. Even the AFL has folded at this point. Like, Mm -hmm. even arena football wasn't enough. Like... And the problem was is because... And in some way, shape, or form, they were trying to compete against the NFL. No, I mean, the AFL's always been off-season. It's just, the interest is not necessarily there. Some sports don't have to be year-round. Like, that's the thing. It, I don't I don't really feel like there's enough fucks to give about football. There wasn't, but now it. there is because both baseball and basketball have petered off hard. Yeah. And apparently the thing that is still going strong is football. Because yeah, but got, football has lost a lot of shit this year because of all the fucking controversy. Yeah, that's true too. They've so, lost a lot of steam. So, I mean, you know, maybe it is a, a time to bring out a alternative to the NFL because a lot of people are pissed off about the NFL and Vince does lean in the right direction. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, being bud buds with uh, our orange president. Yeah. And fucking Linda working, you know... In his administration and shit, like this could be Vince's big right wing chance to be like, "Hey, I don't like all those guys that won't deal during the national anthem." Well, by God, they'll fucking stand up for me. I'm Vince, goddamn McMahon. Like, you know that shit. Whatever. Uh, Rah rah rah. Trailer park people follow me. Ah, you know. 
Whatever. I he mean, does play well. On, I love uh, football and I'll watch it probably. But yeah. I watched the XFL. It yeah. sucked a lot. It was awful. Like yeah. five good players came out of it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Legitimately, <laughs> there, we we did talk and joke about like, would this be the perfect league though? Depending on how it was set up, this could be the perfect league for like people like Tim Tebow and uh, Manziel. Oh, fucking uh, Manziel is going to some CFL team. Is he? Yeah, and Tim Tebow just is doing baseball. Needs to, yeah, fucking calm the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> go, go back and be friends with Jesus. And no, I don't know. Maybe that'll make him friends with you. Uh, suck. Okay, <laughs> make him friends with uh, Vincey boy. There, I don't care. No, go away. The only nailing I see in my <laughs> division <laughs> is for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Care about that fucker? I don't care about fucking Johnny <laughs> Manziel. Fucking... Johnny Manziel could suck my asshole. I can tell you what, Johnny, not football. Uh, he fucking like so, made some fucking. Dude, let's go back to Twitter. Made some fucking shit about like, oh, here's a picture of me when I played for the Browns. Oh, it's sixteen. <laughs> what, uh, what exactly are we trying to say there, Johnny? Like that uh, somehow it wouldn't be the case if you were there because you did exactly dick as a player, yeah. other than go fucking beat your girlfriend. And, uh, you know, party it down and get all whacked up on goofballs. So what the fuck are you trying to say? Oh, now you're really, like, going to throw cocky shit because you're going to go play in the CFL? The NFL's retarded cousin? Yeah. Like, nobody gives a shit about the fucking CFL. The CFL makes dick for money. Guys, th- basically, it's a place to go play when you failed. Yeah. Like, I, no, no disrespect to our Canadian friends, but the CFL is kind of a joke. It's basically kind of like... It's the NFL yeah. you know, when you fail. like It's like Canadian... The Canadian Failure League. Like, <laughs> Canadian hockey players coming to play in the American League. Exactly. Like, eh, like yeah. hey, you're Canadian. You're not good enough to be in the Canadian League, but we'll let you play in the American Yeah, League. here's the big crossover. Like, guys don't come from the CFL generally and in, in successes in the NFL. They flame out in the NFL and then go play in the CFL. Yeah. Like, the ratio is very much skewed in that fucking mm-hmm. direction. Like, yeah, there have been a couple guys who played in the CFL first and then came back and did, and did well. The exception that proves the rule. Mm-hmm. Like, and so, and most whatever. of the time it's because they knew somebody in the NFL and they could get them back in. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So, it is what it is. Yeah. But, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I believe since we're at the about the hour and a half mark, uh, we can probably wrap it up. Uh, I have a bed to go and visit now. As I worked all night last night and had to drive through a fucking ice storm on the way home that sucked a big old weenie. So <laughs> I'm I'm far from beyond a fucking dead duck at this point. So uh, I believe it's chilling time. So uh, if you enjoyed what you heard this week on the Basement Fodder Podcast, you can of course find us on our network home of digitalnerdy.com, which I cannot say without sounding drunk. Or sounding sort of like vaguely Irish. Drunk Irish, but no, Connor. <laughs> Just go to YouTube and look for like Connor McGregor cartoon. It's really, really great. You won't regret it. Oh god, you won't so, regret it. So good. <laughs> Give me a butt. <laughs> so. Uh, you can also find us on our own website of thebasementofdoom.wordpress.com. You can find us on Spreaker. Boy, you can find us on Spreaker because I literally forgot that I hadn't been updating Spreaker for like a year. <laughs> so I last week I uploaded like the entire year's worth of episodes to Spreaker. Spreaker yeah. So it's all updated now. Um, you can find us on iTunes and basically anywhere that you can find a podcast. On the end of a 10 cannon screen, you'll find us. So... Uh, you can find us on the Twitter, unfortunately, and Instagram at, at Basement Fodder. <laughs> you can find us on uh, Facebook and a plethora of things, but mainly if you want to talk to me, Todd, Dave, if you want to talk to Dave, Dave, Basement of Doom. Um, I will drop a tiny, tiny, tiny little teaser for things to come this year. This is very little detail, but a big sort of thing just dropped in our lap for us. Mm-hmm. And we're very excited about it. I can go into basically zero detail. It wasn't my penis, though. We'll see. And it was not that, thank God. <laughs> that would not make me excited. It would make <laughs> me afraid. Um, <laughs> Shit, it's in both our laps. God damn, it's you. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> it's touching me. <laughs> <laughs> the Jadoom Bringer. No, but really, uh, very exciting. I think it's getting its own comic book. All right, there it is. That's it, what no, that is, not that is there. decidedly not in, though. Yeah, I can write yeah, that. Yeah, you could. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But eh, news to come. Yep. <laughs> so, 
But I think that's going to wrap it up for this week. As always, from the uh, Nook of Doom, I'm Ty. I'm Dave. And until next time, the cat will be shitting in the electric box. <laughs> <laughs> <In> my pool! <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.